been that has really tested you or been an, been an issue? I mean, is this going to be a guy that, that uh, presents a, a relatively different challenge? No, he's a lot like Safarian Jenkins, you know, that he's because he's so big. I mean, he's a 6'6", 260-pound kid, was a converted defensive player for them. Was really a highly recruited kid coming out of high school as a defensive end, one of the top kids in the country. So um, from a physical matchup, uh, a lot bigger than most of the tight ends that we face. So, Raise your hand if you have a question. Warren? Chip, um, trap game is, we hear that a lot, but is there um, more of an emphasis on a team like this to emphasize not going to sleep and always doing your job? I know you talk about winning the day. But is, is, is that something that is a concern with a team like this? No, we, we keep the same approach. So it doesn't matter who you're playing. I, you know, if you're consistent in your approach and what you do, um, you know, then we, we anticipate that not being an issue. But we don't overemphasize it depending on who we play. Because if you do, you kind of give in to that notion. So. Aaron? Does Remington remain, sorry, does Remington remain suspended? I, I just got the news, literally just coming off the practice field, so I haven't had a chance to figure out exactly what it is, but we'll send a release out when we change his status. So. Well, you, you determine him being a glue guy on defense. What, what does that mean within the con context of a football team, being a glue guy? That's the first time I've heard that statement. I mean, I think, I guess he's sticky, <laughs> keeps things together. Um, no, I mean, I look at Michael as kind of that, that kid who's just got uh, such a great knowledge of our system. Um, not only what he does, but how everybody else fits into it. So um, you'll see Michael, especially with the younger guys, making sure that they get a line and they're in the right spots. And, um, you know, whether that's a glue guy or a coach on the field, he, he, he brings that um, mindset just because he's just so, he just has a great football mind and he really truly understands exactly what we're doing. and. Um, where not only he's supposed to be, but where everybody else is supposed to be. And then even more importantly, what offenses are trying to do to attack us. And I think he's so great at diagnosing plays that because he's watched so much tape and studied it so much that he's got a great understanding of um, how our defense is going to stop what exactly they're running. Jake. Jim, uh, Avery and Brian each talked to me about how since they roomed together freshman year and they're familiar with each other and that helps them on the field. H have you seen... Uh, a chemistry between those two that, that's helping them in, in the defensive backfield? Yeah, I mean, I don't know about housing arrangements per se with, with most of our guys. So, um, But I, they get, you know, our secondary, because of how what we do things, um, schematically there's got to be a lot of understanding, especially at the safety spot, because, you know, one guy can be down in the coverage and then the next play the next guy's down and, you know, who's playing high, who's playing low. Um, there, there's got to be a great understanding between those guys. You know, whether they lived together two or three years ago, I don't think really has any bearing on that. But um, th there's got to be constant communication between our safeties and, and how they fit and, and where we're going to be. And, you know, when, when you see some busts in coverage, um, you may have two guys low and nobody's high, and that's, that's a problem. But um, those guys have to have constant communication in terms of where they are. And, and, uh, and that's what I think Brian and Avery really do. And you can throw Eric Dargan in that mix, too, because we don't miss a beat when Dargs is in there. So. Marcus had a huge game running the ball. How much of what you want to do as an offense is predicated on him being able to run the ball? It's, pre it's always been predicated on the same thing. It's predicated on what the defense does because we don't go into a game saying, hey, we want to run the quarterback. We don't have designed quarterback runs where we snap it directly to the quarterback and he's just running it. You know, it's all part of the um, when our quarterback's taken off, whether it's a scramble play or you know somebody's covered and, and, and they give him an opportunity to take off and run or whether it's a read play. but. You know, we'll play some teams that our quarterback doesn't have a carry, but that's not because um, we didn't call it. We called the same plays in some games, and the quarterback's forced to run a little bit more. And then in other games, he's not forced to run it. So it's really kind of what the defense dictates in terms of what we're going to do. But the one thing with Marcus is if the D defense dictates that he's going to run, um, he, he, he can hurt them. So. Chip, uh, your defense number one in the red zone in the nation. What's been working? Why are you guys so successful there? I, you know, I think our guys just have a, a number one, a great understanding of what we do. Um, real intelligent group of, of players, uh, and and we're really athletic. And when the field starts to get constricted, when you get down there, um, we've got athletic guys that can cover a lot of space. So um, it's a combination of really, I think, their intelligence and their athletic ability that that allows us to play that that high level defense in the red zone. And also on defense, 14 interceptions on the season. Um, it's not just coming from the defensive backs, but the linebackers as well. What's what's working there? 
again, good athletes. They've, they've all got really, really good hands. You know, um, they're, they're, they've got a good knowledge of the scheme, um, you know, so they know where they're supposed to be. Um, but when the ball's shown to them, there's a lot of teams that, you know, they got more pass breakups and interceptions, and it's because maybe they don't catch the ball as well. But we've got a got, got bunch of guys that got outstanding hands in us. You know, in that group, Bo's got great hands. Kiko's got really, really good hands. Michael Clay's got good hands. You know, Avery obviously has got really good hands. Eric Dargan may have the best hands out of all those guys. Um, but Ifo can catch. Ifo is a punt return or kick return guy. Terrence Mitchell can catch. A um, bunch of guys back there that are real athletic and, and can catch the football real well. Molly? Much like uh, Marcus running the football, is it, is it the same with the way you use DeAnthony, that the defense sort of dictates whether he's catching or running or and his yardage? No, I mean, we have more called runs for D'Anthony, you know, when, when uh, I mean, we can scheme it up where D'Anthony's getting the ball. So it's a little bit different between the quarterback and the running back. If I could ask a couple follow-ups on Mike Clay. Uh, I mean, just a veteran guy who's been around, I suppose you'd expect that they'd have a knowledge of the system. But, I mean, is he He's different. More than... Yeah, but he, and he was like that when he first came in here. I mean, there's a, there's a there are guys that understand what's going on, and there are guys that not only understand what's going on with us, but understand what's going on on the other side of the ball, where he's, you know, a little bit advanced beyond his, his, uh, his time here, and, and and that's what I think makes Michael special. I mean, he's, he's a student of the game, but he's a great student in the classroom. He, he's everything you want, um, but he he's got a little bit more knowledge than just someone that's been in the system for four years, so they understand, you know, where they're supposed to be when we call a set defense or we call a set coverage. You know. He can tell you the percentages of what they run out of that formation based on what personnel is in the game. Um, they, the game of football comes real natural to Michael, which is, uh, you know, it's it's a it's something that's special. Not everybody has what he has. I think from a intellectual standpoint, in terms of the game. He said uh, he and Boya had a kind of a similar connection that way, um, and that's been an adjustment since John's been out. I mean, has what Michael does become even more valuable to you guys since John went out in that regard? No, because he's not getting the guys out back lined up. You know, I think Avery and and Brian and all those guys do. He, you know, he's not gonna. He, he, it's asking him too much to get those guys to get everybody on the on, the, you know, out there lined up. That he's not gonna be able to do his job. You know, he's in charge of the the front and Avery and Brian in charge of the back end. So. Rick, twice I think this year you've had to take points off the board while a touchdown was reviewed, and they said no, he didn't go in, so he had to run the play again. Although play that wasn't counted you did score on is there anything that can be done about that or is that is that a concern to you that the, the that there's not getting the ball set and they're not getting the replay call in quick enough I think that's a very intelligent question <laughs> yeah I mean I think it's it's like anything you know when they're close you know, and there are times when you look at film that they're close, they made plays, you know, they had six or seven trips into the red zone in their last game, but it's, you know, it's a matter of punching it over the over the line, you know, and I think the difference between good teams and great teams is is how you play inside the 20. You know, a lot of teams can move the ball between the 20s, but when you get in there, do you score? And, and when they get in there, do you stop them? And, um, you know, sometimes it is a play, and there's, a, you know, there's one play that turns into, you know, all of a sudden that they, they, things start clicking. Um, so I don't, I can't specifically point to what it is, but they, they have the ability to move the football, and they proved that last week against a real good defense. You know, you know, but it's, it's our job to, especially when we get down there, and we've been good so far. But you know, we got to continue that if they do get down the red zone against us, that we need to, you know, kind of bow our backs and stop them from putting points on the board. So, Dirk, coach, after the Arizona State win, you said your team doesn't flinch; they don't blink when something goes wrong. Where does that come from? I think their confidence. You know, they, they got to understand that one play is not going to define a football game. Um, you know, and that we got to we we always want to play the next snap. You know, and and um, we're going to make mistakes, but we we play with great they play with great effort. Um, and I also think they they do a great job from a preparation standpoint of making sure. You know, you may fool them once, but that you're not going to fool them twice on defense. You know, we may have a sloppy exchange in the backfield or a miscommunication up front, but that's not going to be a consistent thing that happens. And, you know, no one plays a perfect game, and, and you can't dwell on what happened in the past. You can learn from it, but you can't dwell on it. Um, and I think our guys are confident that, you know, we, we got the ability to score points and we got the ability to stop people over the course of 60 minutes. Um, people are going to make plays in, in every game that, that you play against you. But it's about always playing the next snap, and I think that's kind of what our mentality is. Next to last question with Rob. Regarding Rick's question, regarding
regardless of your opinion of those ways, do you have recourse to address things with the conference or whoever if something like that comes up? I'd, I'd like to answer that question, but I can't. So I was told I can never talk about it. So. Okay. What's that? I, they can they'll, they can find you anytime they want to find you, from what I understand. So, I learned my lesson a couple of years ago. So, I can't talk about it. So, their kick Last returner, question. their kick returner Mosley, how much of a concern is he? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>